you, Mr. Brewster, the more I see of these pictures, the more I want to get out there and help Cousin Jed. Of course, I wouldn't go without being asked. Well, naturally. But, uh, you know, I, I think you should go. I've been asked. <laughs> well, now, it's not exactly my province. I, I mean, I, uh, well, why don't you telephone your cousin and talk to him? Oh, why, they ain't a telephone within 40 miles of this place. Nearest one, I guess, is uh, at the International Emporium, clean over to Oxford. Well, I'll be happy to drive you over there. Oh, I couldn't let you drive me all that way just to use the telephone. Busy oil company man like you. <laughs> That's 40 miles. There's no trip at all in this car. No, I couldn't do it. Why, folks that see me riding in this big, shiny car with a tall, good-looking city fella, <laughs> why, sure as the world, they'd think that Let's go. Well, uh, what about your horse and buggy? Oh, just untie, Bessie. You go on home. <laughs> well, uh, Bessie's headed for home, all right. Uh, Mrs. Bodine, how long has your buggy been hitched there? By an hour, why? Why, uh, Blue Jay built her nest on the seat, and she was sitting on her eggs. <laughs> Oh, shoot. I wanted to wear that. <laughs> and here's Miss Hathaway. Mon Capitan, je suis l'état. Fine. Ready for Ellie Mae? Gentlemen, aided and abetted by the gossamer garments, exotic lotions, and other feminine appurtenances within these curtains, I am ready to assume the role of Pygmalion and transform that barefoot galatea into a striking and sophisticated paragon of Beverly Hills Le Couture. That's yes, the hard way. <laughs> well, duty calls. I leave you in capable hands. Goodbye, Mr. Clavitt. Thank you, sir. Chief. <laughs> Well, that sure is neighborly of you, Miss Hathaway. You reckon you can handle Ellie Mae? Uncle Jed, Granny says... Oh, howdy, Miss Hathaway. Oh, bonjour, Jethro. Here them things in for Miss Hathaway, Jethro. I think she kind of likes you, boy. She does? Well, I can't take them into the house. That's what I come out here to tell you. Granny says that all the men folks got to stay out of the house while Ellie Mae's taking her bath. Oh. But isn't Ellie Mae bathing in the privacy of her own bedroom suite? Hear what she called you? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with him? Why doesn't he answer? Hey, he's just a little shy, I reckon. Ask him again. Is Ellie Mae in her bedroom suite? No, she ain't, darling. <laughs> Fine, I'll find her myself. Uncle Jed, I got me a girl. You sure have, boy, and a city girl, too. <laughs> yeah! Oh, some city girls I were about. Jess was such a good-looking boy. Every girl in the fifth grade was after him. I hardly think anything serious can develop between boys and girls in the fifth grade. Oh, I don't know. So far this year, there's been three couples out of Jethro's class get married. Married? Fifth grader. Parsons nearly as busy in that school as the teacher. That's amazing. Oh, I've heard of them. Uh oh, uh, wouldn't you know it? There's that Snoopy Alverna Bradshaw and her big mouth door sitting on my front porch. Oh, I can just hear the stories. They'll start going around if they see me in this car here with you. <sighs> yeah! Terrible gossip, that woman always making trouble. <laughs> she tried to talk Griney out of going to California. <laughs> she ought to see Griney now. Living like a queen in that Beverly Hills mansion. <laughs> Listen to Elverna Bradshaw and stayed home. Had a pump right in the house. Didn't have to tote water a quarter of a mile. 
Oh, are you ready to get rinsed off, Ellie? Well, not yet, Granny. Should have washed my hair. No. You better wait till I can catch some rainwater. That pond water smells like it's got medicine in it. I wondered why there's no fish in that pond. Yeah. I reckon that water killed them fish. But don't you worry. My life soap will kill anything that killed them fish. <laughs> Have you seen... What in the world's going on here? Well, there's a bath going on. That's what's going on. Howdy. <laughs> but I don't understand. Well, then somebody ought to explain it to you, sissy woman. You see, first you heat some water. Then you put it in a great big tub like this. You put some soap in it, and then you get in it, and you start to wash, and that's what you call a bath. <laughs> Granny, you don't have to do this sort of thing in Beverly Hills. Don't you listen to her, Ellie. <laughs> Ain't you ever heard that saying that... Cleanness is next to godliness? But of course, John Wesley said that. And I bet he didn't live in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Here, Ellie, dry yourself off with this nice big bath towel. That's my girl. I'll rinse off that oh. old lye soap. Lye soap? Did you say lye soap? <laughs> That's right. I make it myself. But that will ruin this beautiful girl's delicate skin. I've been washing with it for 72 years. Look at my skin. It's like leather. <laughs> nice, ain't it? <laughs> Granny, I hope you will forgive my momentary bewilderment at this primitive form of ablution, but please let me explain. Well, I'll first explain what you just said. <laughs> well, Ellie Mae has a beautiful big bathtub upstairs. Upstairs? It was hard enough carrying the water in here. I ain't gonna tote no water upstairs. But you don't have to. There's a big, beautiful... Haven't you been upstairs? No. Jed said that probably belonged to somebody else. <laughs> ain't that right, Ellie? Yeah. Paul said he heard tell that folks sometimes live one family right on top of another. But that's only in apartment houses. This entire house belongs to you. And each one has his own individual bedroom suite. Come along and let me show you. And also the lovely things I brought from town. Yeah, well, you go ahead. I'll be up directly. What all did you bring from town? Everything, Ellie. Everything from chapeau to pumps. <laughs> pumps! Praise the Lord! Now I won't have to tote water. <laughs> you through? Yeah, Uncle Jet. Now, you're gonna be keeping company with a girl. Is there any questions you like to ask me? What kind of questions? <laughs> no, about girls. How much you know about girls? They softer than boys. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Generally speaking. <laughs> and they shorter and rounder. Yeah. And the hair's longer and it smells sweet when you snuggles up to them. <laughs> Ooh, so you've been doing some snuggling, have you? I've done more than that. Yeah, well, I reckon you better tell me about it. Who was she? Prettiest girl in the hills. Big Mouth Bradshaw. <laughs> uh, old Verna's girl. I hear tell she's kind of fast. Is she ever? Uncle Jed, I was walking past the cabin, and Big Mouth, she calls out the window to me, she says, howdy, Jethro. She says, my ma's just made a big batch of cookies. Come on in and have some. And I says, sure your ma won't mind? And she says, ma's gone, and so's pa. I'm here all alone. Well, Uncle Jed, I was in that house before you could wink an eye. I can't see as I blame you. No sooner was I inside, the big ma, she puts a music record on the phonograph machine and commences to sashaying around. Twisting and a turning. <laughs> Dancing. Yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> anyway, she says, put your arms around me, Jethro, and I'll teach you the two step. What'd you say? I says, listen, Big Mouth, I says, here we are all alone. Your ma and your pa gone. And you think that I'm going to waste my time dancing? I say, it's not me, sister. Bring on them cookies. <laughs> what she said? Well... Jed, you and Jethro can start digging the well. That city woman brought us some pumps. That's fine, <laughs> Granny. We'll get right to it. <laughs> what did that Bradshaw girl say when you said bring on them cookies? Well... 
she just held up them cookies like this here. Kind of blinked her eyes at me and said, Jethro, which do you think it tastes sweeter? These here cookies or my lips? <laughs> well, Uncle Jed, right then and there is when I found out she was fast. <laughs> I grabbed them two cookies and it took me two miles to outrun that gal. <laughs> On one of these days, you and me's got to have a long talk. 